Second day of IMTS and first of all, thank you so much for all the thumbs up and likes on the yesterday's video. I really appreciate it. So I want to make it clear that me recording these videos are literally just for people's enjoyment of the show. I have absolutely no intention of showing something that should not be shown. I will also say that Mitsubishi actually reached out to me yesterday, inviting me back to their booth and would love to show some of the things that they have. back in the convention center and it should be a busy day. I would, I would use this with uh, block delete. Okay. Right? So the first time you run a part, you run it in block delete. It gives you setup instructions. After that, you turn off block delete, you run it normally, and you'll get different instructions on checking accuracy and you know how to check your part. But you can... Um, Inside of your list program, you can put whatever pictures, videos, anything you want. Okay. M120, check.jpg. And then it calls up the JPEG. Yep. There it was. So I say confirm that whole size. Obviously, you have to have zero. This is an ST30 with a parts loader. So you just load your blanks already pre sized, like in there, yep. and then it just grabs them one by one by one. Yep. I kind of like that. The new bar feeder? I have not. Okay. So all you have to do is load up your bars. This will automatically pull in the next one, push it in. You see the bar there? But a lot of people use different size bars, so if you want to change from this size to another size, all you have to do is push down on the foot pedal, push the bar feeder out of the way. Now you can change out your liner. This is the same UMC, but instead of a platter, we put a ground table on. Okay. With another rotor. Oh, okay. So what does that give you? Better reach or? Better better uh, ability to do those. Uh, Crazy moves. Reporting. Okay. Tool paths. We're showing off on this machine is we sort of brought back the handles. There used to be big red jog handles like a manual machine, but now we have this device, which is actually magnetically mounted. So you can move it wherever you want. Come in here and you can actually jog around it and make your part. So you're machining and you can't see anything because you can never see anything. So you just put it up here and just blow the air and you can see. Actually, these windows here are pretty pretty neat, right? So what happens is that it spins around very quickly with air, so when the coolant hits that little plexiglass that is spinning around, it lets you see through. Now, from my experience though, they do get scratched over time. So at some point you probably gotta replace these little plexiglass that are spinning around. I 
really want to show you uh, DMG Morris booth. This is the one of the ones that I was on the list because I know they're doing some really neat stuff. So I actually asked uh, permission, <laughs> you know, an old dog learning new tricks, um, in regards to uh, if I could uh, shoot some video and take some photos. Uh, now I am on hold. So let's see how long I gotta wait. So, show me awesomeness on day runs. So you literally have a picture of, you have a camera on the machine that is looking down at the part and by using your finger, you're literally moving the entire table. I mean, think about like an iPad on like steroids. So literally by clicking on the image, you were able to start the probing cycle? Yep. So we didn't enter any numbers at all. And everything is visual and we're able to set up a part without having to have a keyboard even. That is so sick. I love that. Guys, you guys have heard me talk about uh, Mighty Byte before, so uh, here we are at the Mighty Byte booth. This is my favorite work holding tool, um, but this one here is definitely one of the favorites I have used. So you screw down the screw and it kind of spreads out. These ones here you can actually machine your own shape into, but it's kind of cool if you have like a round part, you can uh, machine that diameter and then it will spread out on that. Another one that I have used quite a bit is these bit pit bull clamps here. They're kind of neat too. Got to be careful that you don't make marks in your path, especially if you're doing like 6061, but they, these are pretty neat. What you do is you go to Mighty Bytes website, and from right there, you can actually get the dimensions uh, that you have to machine the pockets out for. So if you are looking for work holding, personally, you know, I'm not familiar, you know, affiliated with these guys, but you know, this uh, Mighty Bytes stuff is pretty cool. I got to show you one thing that is new. This was actually Tim Paul, if any of you guys follow Tim on Instagram, who uh, pointed me to this one. So, so they do spreadable stuff. Uh, that these kind of things spreads out. So here we have this yeah, kind of part here that has the opening and then you got the clamp itself here. So this thing fits over right here. Well, down below here, there is a handle. Now when you start, this is my camera's gonna fall over. There we go. Now right now this thing is sitting, sitting loose, but this thing here, if I start tightening this one down, it will actually lock down the part and now this part is secure to, uh, to be able to machine. So if you're looking for some quick ways to, uh, to, to clamp things down, this is uh, definitely the tool. Now here you can actually see an example of what I was talking about before. The part has a radius on it and then you're machining out the same radius here. And now you can just fold them in and it will tighten it down. So I think today uh, have been pretty neat. I feel like um, that I've gotten a lot of material. It can be kind of hard when you're walking around to kind of like get a grasp on what is good and what is usable and not usable.
just want to make sure, did you go and download the free CNC handbook? If you have not, check out the link and go and get it.